welcome back to Kimmel and Cox, your source for all things entertainment. I'm Michelangelo. Uh, sorry, I uh, was kind of in turtle mode there a little bit. Hey, everybody, uh, welcome back to Kimmel and Cox. Uh, I'm Keith Cox. I'm joined, as always, by my good friend uh, Dylan Kimmel. And today we're going to be talking about a movie franchise that is very uh, special to me. Uh, and was a huge part of my childhood, and I believe that's true for, for Dylan as well. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, uh, I did not get the chance to grow up on the, the cartoon, because those were in the 80s. Uh, I'm not even sure when they went off air, uh, but it was probably before... Can't. Yeah, I think it was, it was before uh, before your time, but yeah. uh, but we are talking, of course, about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the first film in the franchise. Uh, but actually, before we get into that, uh, we do have a special announcement uh, for everyone. Uh, we promised a few weeks ago that we had some big news coming your way, and when we promise uh, that we have big news, by golly, we deliver on that. So, uh, But uh, Kimmel and Cox is going to Lexington Comic Con this year. We have uh, been accepted into the Comic Con. It's uh, going to be March 23rd through the 26th at Central Bank Center, uh, right here in our hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. So if you happen to be in the area, or even if you're not in the area, uh, come out and say hi. We'd, we'd love to see you. Uh, we're going to have a booth out there, and um, hopefully we'll actually have some, some cool stuff that we can, uh, that we can uh, give you as well, maybe some T-shirts or something along those lines. And, uh, but, uh, but this is, this is going to be huge uh, for, for the podcast uh, just to be included in, mm. in something like that. And, uh, and I think it's really going to, to do wonders uh, for the podcast. Hopefully we'll, we'll get to uh, meet a lot of, a lot of people uh, through that and, um, and you know maybe kind of uh, do a live stream or something. Uh, I think we're thinking about uh, doing a live stream on one of the days that we're there. Yeah. And... Um, and you know maybe we'll even get to talk to some of the other guests that are going to be attending the con. Uh, so anyway, just wanted to wanted to put that out there and uh, everybody mark your calendars and get ready for that because it's uh, it's going to be a great time. So yes, yes, but lots of fun. But today, today uh, again, we're going to be talking about uh, the first film in the uh, original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, mm -hmm. uh, which was released on March thirtieth, nineteen ninety. Uh, this was at the height of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mania, and uh, of course there was there were some things that preceded that, uh, which we'll get into. But uh, but the movie was written by Bobby Herbeck and Todd W. Langan, uh, based on characters created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, uh, mm -hmm. which were uh, comic book uh, comic book. Uh, creators because the the Ninja Turtles were originally uh, a comic book uh, before uh, before they had uh, a cartoon series or and, and originally was a lot more grittier too. It was, um, and uh, the movie was directed by Steve Barron, and uh, starring Judith Hogue as April O'Neil, uh, Elias Coteus as Casey Jones, Raymond Sarah as Chief Stearns. Michael Turney as Daniel Pennington, James Sato as the Shredder, Jay Patterson as Charles Pennington, and uh, Toshishiro Obata as Tatsu. Mm -hmm. And featuring, uh, now when we get into talking about uh, the Turtles themselves, which are of course the true stars uh, mm -hmm. of the movie, yeah. really there were, uh, it basically took three different people to play each turtle mm -hmm. so when you talk about you know casting it's like you know who do you choose do you choose the voice actors do you choose the actors the performers who were in the suit in the mm -hmm. turtle suits uh so i guess those would really be the the two main ones yeah. uh so uh for example uh so uh leonardo uh was played by uh brian tochi uh was the voice of Leonardo, 
uh, and then the performer who was in the Leonardo suit uh, was David Foreman. Mm -hmm. And then for Donatello, uh, it was Corey Feldman uh, providing the voice. Uh, and anybody who grew up uh, in the 80s especially uh, will be very familiar with Corey Feldman. And, Probably the uh, most his famous work. voicing that one of the Turtles, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he was a huge, uh, you know, success as a, as a child actor. And, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the in-suit performer for him was Leif Tilden. Uh, for Michelangelo, uh, he was voiced by Robbie Rist. Uh, who some of you may uh, probably be best known for uh, playing uh, Oliver on the Brady Bunch. Uh, I made a few uh, appearances uh, on the Brady Bunch. Uh, I, as I that never kid. got into Brady as Bunch. As a kid, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, and then the NSU performer for him was uh, Michelin Sisti. Mm. And uh, for Raphael, uh, he was the only turtle uh, in which the uh, both the voice actor and the in suit performer were one and the same. Uh, That's impressive. Yes, uh, Josh Pies uh, played Raphael, and uh, and I think the reason for that was because uh, he he played Raphael with a, a very thick New York accent, mm -hmm. uh, which was kind of really set him apart from you know from the other turtles, and I guess they were. You know the casting directors were impressed. I think they gave each one of the in-suit performers a chance to do the voice, like mm -hmm. you know, so they could do both. But uh, for different reasons, uh, they chose to go with other actors to dub the voices, except for for him. They were, I guess, the most impressed with his portrayal of that. I mean, it does. I mean, honestly, when I think of uh, Raphael, that that is the voice that comes to mind. It is for me too. It yeah. it, it uh, fits really well with his attitude, you know, because yeah. he has a he's very sar sarcastic and and uh, and has hot headed, yeah, and uh, and just has a, a bit of a, a chip on his shoulder. Uh, but I can remember being super excited about this movie uh, when it came out because I was already like a full blown like Ninja Turtles fanatic. Um, now, it started as a comic book uh, in 1984, mm -hmm. and there are some uh, noticeable differences between the comic book and the movie. The movie was mostly based on the early uh, Turtles comics, like the first few that mm -hmm. were released. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but there were some differences. Um, you, you own any of the comics? I I used to. I, there there may still be some floating around uh, at my mom's house somewhere in the attic or something like that. So might have to try to to dig those up because mm, uh, yeah. I didn't have any like uh, first editions or anything like that. But but I did have some of the earlier uh, comics because I was introduced uh, to the turtles through. A friend of mine who was uh, a little older than me, he was about two and a half, uh, three years uh, older than me, and he was really heavy into, you know, comics and stuff like that. And uh, but, but I first became familiar with the Ninja Turtles through the uh, first animated series, uh, which uh, debuted in 1987. Uh, and so, and th here was the, this was the weird thing. And you don't really, I don't think anybody else has done this before, but basically the the toy line the ninja turtles toy line mm -hmm. was was created from the comic books uh it, they 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 tied everything in together because they they saw an opportunity to uh to really they they were more concerned about marketing the mm -hmm. turtles as a toy line rather than I, at that time they didn't have any plans to make like a series or movies or anything like that and so you had so the comics came first and then the toys and then the animated series typically you wouldn't get action figures yeah, or anything until like you know until uh, the show until, came out right yeah um so i was already very familiar with you know with the turtles uh through the toys and through the animated series and so when i found out they were going to be making a live action movie and when i saw like the very first trailer for it mm -hmm. I was just, you know, as a kid, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is going to be like amazing because uh, the way that just the way the turtles looked and moved and everything, it was like, it was everything you could have wanted, you know, in, in like, um, you know, making that transition, you know, from 
uh, an animated show to a live action show mm. because a lot of times those movies don't don't turn out very yeah. well. They're done very cheap and this was not cheap looking at all like no. those those puppets and everything the the suits they, they looked amazing. I mean, they look like crap now because obviously we're we're decades um, yeah I mean away from that era now we've, yeah we've advanced so far uh, with technology and everything but for its time you know it was mm -hmm. you know state of the art animatronics it mm -hmm. was the like the uh, the the turtles were uh, created uh, by Jim Henson's Creature Shop which. I'm sure most of you know Jim Henson is famous for creating the Muppets. Well, let, let me uh, backtrack on what I just said there. When I said that uh, they looked like crap now, I meant like they aged. Like, you know, if you actually look in a oh, museum, like right. they age. I just yeah. now thought it was like, wait, I didn't mean it like that. They still look amazing. Yeah, if you, in the movie, yeah, they do yeah. look amazing. But if you, I, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like if you, and you can look those up on YouTube, there's clips of like, uh, some of the original turtle suits are still floating around out there and they do they've deteriorated so much over the years mm -hmm. that like you know they're uh, like the skin like the foam foam latex like skin is like like yeah it's like pulling away from their face and yeah. like and it's almost like you can see the the animatronic skeletons underneath uh, mm -hmm. the suits you know their teeth are all hanging out and their eyes you know look weird and but uh, but but yeah, in the movie they were, uh, you know, they looked fantastic, and and they had lots of different types of suits. They had the full animatronic suits, which I hate to see what Splinter would have looked like. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, oh, that that reminds me, I did uh, forget to. I uh, can't believe I forgot to include Splinter in oh, the, uh, yeah. in the in the cast list, but uh, and he was voiced by uh, Kevin Clash. Uh, but there was no in suit performer for. Uh, Splinter. It was mm. there wasn't a real person inside the suit. It, that was a full puppet uh, because he was so much smaller. That like the turtles were human sized, and mm. you know Splinter was a little bit uh, smaller. But uh, but anyway, like the the suits were so advanced. Like they had um, animatronics like inside the heads of the suits. Like they were basically these uh, motors, uh, you know, inside the heads, and those were connected to. There was like a uh, kind of like a backpack that was inside the shells on the suit that was concealed by the shells, mm. but there was all this cabling and everything that was running up into the uh, the motors and stuff inside the head to you know make the mouths move and you know yeah. in different directions and and you had puppeteers that were you know on the side like you know off off to the side on the set that were controlling the movements of the mouth and stuff and then the uh, actors obviously were you know moving around uh, inside the suits and and adding further um you know a, you know animation and, and enthusiasm uh to uh, to the performances but but for its time i mean jim henson even commented on it at that time that that was was the most uh advanced mm -hmm. animatronics that he had ever worked with that, that and jim henson was the master of puppetry like like i don't think anyone could ever compete with that Guy. No. not even today and of course his son brian uh took over all that after mm -hmm. uh after he passed jim henson actually passed uh just about two months before this movie was released so this was the last project uh that he worked on mm -hmm. uh although that, he that, did although that explains why in the sequels they look different yeah they do have a very different, uh, you know, uh, look and, and feel to them. The first one, they, they were, they looked the best. Yeah, the first one is definitely the gold standard of the of the trilogy of original uh, Turtles movies. Um, but you know, it, it was sad that um, you know that he never got to see the success of mm. that because yeah. he really, after he got involved with it, like he did it as a favor to the director Steve Barron. Uh, because he felt that the film was uh, too violent, mm. where he was primarily known for doing, you know, kids uh, movies and shows and everything. Like he thought this was uh, a little bit too much, a little bit too dark, a little bit too violent, and he wasn't sure that he really wanted his name associated with it. But he did it as a favor to the director, and of course, mm. we're all glad he did because I don't think that without his uh, his 
help, I don't think that the movie would have been as good as it as successful as it was. It's an interesting thing. I uh, think that the film is too violent and everything like that. Like, uh, okay, so, so children's movies. He's done children's movies and everything like that. Um, I think there's a fine line between too violent. Like to me, too violent means you're you're on the edge of being R rated. Yeah, and I don't feel like there, this there is. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't blood and guts or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they were using weapons and they mm-hmm. were, you know, they were using uh, they never ninjutsu. Even really they were kicking and and punching you know, people, but it wasn't. You they know. never really stabbed anybody either with those. Th- no, I mean they had you know Leonardo has a sword and mm-hmm. Raphael has his uh, size, you know, but they never actually like. They kind of used them almost in more of like a uh, defensive position or mm-hmm. like a or like a, a dueling kind of thing rather yeah. than actually they're not like you know stabbing people with them. Uh, so so I, yeah, but I don't understand the criticism there. But um, I guess I could see it for its time because those that I, even parents of that time were kind of like, mm, I don't know about this one because even. Uh, like just to compare it to the Batman movie, because okay, so Batman '89, and then the, the uh, then the Batman Returns came out, and um, parents were like, "Oh my goodness, I'm afraid to take my child to see these movies. They're too violent and too, you know, dark and everything." Um, I'd say the same was probably prevalent with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is yeah, which it, is it, funny because I. Just don't see it. I see it as a family picture, right? There. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it, you know. Now, granted, the you know one of the things that that I think parents may have had a problem with as well uh, with that movie was was that uh, and it sort of took on the tone of of the early Turtles comics and the mm-hmm. uh, graphic novels and things like that. Uh, is that you know the the Turtles cursed. And mm. stuff a little bit in the first one. Not anything, you know, it wasn't anything like major, you know, but yeah. but for some parents, especially, you know, if you grew up in a really conservative household like I did, mm-hmm. uh, then, you know, like, like you know, my parents weren't crazy about, about that, you know, mm-hmm. that's like these turtles are like, you know, cussing and everything and, and you know, but, yeah. uh, but you know, it's, it's still very, very, very tame compared to the stuff that is out there now. That, that's what it is. Uh, parents of that time were more conservative. That's what it is. Yeah. And, you know, but, uh, but they did, as we will see, and when we get into talking about the other movies, two movies, they did uh, shift after this one. They did shift to a much more family-friendly tone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but I think this first movie definitely captures the what what the creators of the Ninja Turtles would have wanted. Like you know, it, it, yeah. it matched that uh, tone. You know, it, like I said, it was a little bit. You know, it was still family friendly, but it was a little bit edgier. It was a little bit, you know, darker as well. And I think that's why I liked it so much because yeah. it wasn't your typical like, you know, kid kid movie. Uh, I but, didn't actually own any of the sequels. I only owned this one. This one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which you know, I could certainly understand that. I mean, the the second one, the second one is not awful. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's definitely uh, enjoyable. Uh, yeah. The the third one is absolutely horrible, and we'll, <laughs> and we'll definitely get into that when we when we do that episode. But uh, but you know, there there were some differences uh, between this and uh, the way the characters were portrayed in the comics. For example, uh, April O'Neil uh, in in the comics and especially in the animated series, she was always portrayed as maybe a little bit more of a a bimbo, <laughs> I think. Yeah. You know, like uh, just in the way that she dressed, and and uh, you know, she was she was a little bit more of a, I guess, a typical like damsel in distress type. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Judith Hogue portrayed her as a, as a much more capable, uh, intelligent, uh, uh, strong, yeah. you know, woman. You know, who could you know take care of herself. Uh, you know, for the most part, and uh, 
and I think that was a choice for her that you know she wanted to play it that way. Like they they tried to put her, they said they tried to put her in the jumpsuit, like they wanted her to basically look like you know the the cartoon character, Mm. and she was like, absolutely not. She's like, I'm not. Honestly, that would have looked ridiculous because you're a news reporter. Why are you in a jumpsuit? Why would you be wearing a jumpsuit? It's not a you know you're not trying to make a fashion statement or anything there. You're just reporting the news, and so so she held her own on that and didn't want the character to to have that kind of goofiness and uh, <laughs> although they did pay homage to it a little bit because in the beginning of the movie she, she wears a yellow a yellow, yellow yeah. raincoat you yeah. know which was kind of a, a reference there um and with splinter uh, in the comics his uh, like in the movie he he tells the there's a flashback where he tells a story his origin story and then how the turtles came to be and he talks about his uh you know he was a pet and his uh, his master Hamato Yoshi, you know, uh, owned him, and basically mm-hmm. he he would mimic his his movements, and he learned ninjutsu by watching him. And then later on, of course, he was exposed to this uh, mutagen, which was like this green, mm-hmm. you know, ooze or whatever, and radioactive radioactive. Um, uh, side note, fun fact. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles is technically a parody of Daredevil, and that ooze is oh, right. fan, uh, fan fiction or whatever uh, theorized that it was uh, the ooze was the same chemical that made Daredevil blind. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. forgot about those Daredevil ties. Yeah. And and, and the Foot Clan. And the Foot, the foot Clan, clan is uh, what a parody of uh, the hand, the hand <laughs> in, in the Daredevil comics. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a little yeah. Uh, okay, back to but the splinter. so, so in the comics, in the comics, uh, Splinter was Hamato Yoshi. He was yes. human. He was human and was transformed into a rat mm-hmm. by the uh, by the radioactive uh, ooze. And it, but in this one, they they kind of change that around a little bit, and it's, it kind of makes more sense if you think yeah. about it, that he was already a rat, and then mm-hmm. he just became a mutated rat when he became exposed yeah. to. And I think it, I think they've changed Splinter's origin like three times. That's the one that I'm more comfortable with, like I love. And then I think they change it a third time for the reboot. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, and uh, same same thing for the uh, for the four turtles. You know, they were exposed to that same radioactive substance and and mutated into walking, talking, uh, you know, five foot turtles. And and uh, obviously they you know Master Splinter trained them uh, in the art of ninjutsu and and their you know uh, expert uh, expert martial arts uh, fighters and. Uh, it, but it's you know it, it's a it's a really fun movie uh, to watch and just uh, you know I think at any age I think it's you know entertaining mm. yeah there there are definitely some uh, cheesy uh, elements to it yeah uh, but you know but I mean if you if you just sit back and and enjoy it uh, for what it is it is a really uh, enjoyable movie um, and uh, Casey Jones. Uh, it was another character that I wanted to talk about, mm. uh, which uh, Elias Coteus does a great job. Uh, I, I love the way he portrayed the character in terms of, um, you know, his his attitude and and, yeah. and the way that the, you know his his cockiness and but I but I always felt like you know if, because if you were familiar with the comics and the animated series, mm-hmm. uh, Casey Jones had a very different sort of look to him. You know, he mm-hmm. was a much more uh, muscular like buff guy right. and and I always thought that you know Elias Coteus while, while he was fit you know he seemed a little bit too thin you know oh, for me thin. to be he, did, he didn't seem to you know he didn't have that like really like tough mm. look to him other than you know he, he had the long hair you know and everything yeah. but uh, I guess at the time I thought that uh, that he probably looked the least like the way the character was originally portrayed mm. uh, but but I do think he delivered on the on the way that he you know portrayed the character I think he captured the feel uh, you know the yeah. essence of the character yeah I do think think he did yeah um, in recent years we've seen Casey Jones being um, portrayed by uh, most recently from what I remember he was portrayed by Stephen Amell mm-hmm um, 
and well I mean honestly pretty much I don't think they've captured what made that first one great any no in not in, not in subsequent movies they really haven't it was just one of those things where it was uh, you know it was uh, the perfect perfect casting they had uh, you know the perfect crew the right people around them to to make it happen um, it was definitely a movie for its time I don't think that it, it, I don't think it could be made the same way now and have have the same effect that it did then um, but yeah, it, it, it's uh, it's definitely one of a kind uh, mm. in, in that sense. And uh, yeah, we, we'll never get puppetry again. And now it's going to be all CGI all yeah. the time. Which I think, I don't know. To me, it to me it cheapens it even more. Some people would say that that the mm. the puppetry I'd the animatronics made it look cheesy, but I think it adds realism to it. I try it. It does. It does. Because not only that, but you also get the sense that the actors. Something about uh, CGI is kind of like uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You you have this uh, this uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, you have like the um, well, you have that mixture of yeah. animation and there, live there's, action. There's a uncanny valley. Very, you have to do it correctly in order to make it look real. Like, okay, so in recent years, even the Marvel movies kind of been slacking with the CGI. Um, I'm, I'm sure you remember when you saw, like, Avengers Endgame and you saw Thanos. Thanos is completely CGI, but he looked so real, right? But uh, there's this uh, fine line where you actually look at the CGI and you're like, I can tell it's CGI. When you look at a puppet, you might, your brain might be saying, yeah, I can tell it's a puppet. But it's so much easier to believe the puppet being a real thing. Yeah, because it's actually moving within yeah. the scene and, you know, and interacting with the other actors. I'd say if I were to be a filmmaker, this is how I would use puppetry and CGI. Puppetry would be the main thing. Puppetry, I love puppetry. And I know exactly why studios don't want to do puppetry anymore. Money. Yeah. Uh, it costs too much. Um, and, and you know, things break and everything like that. So they're like, too much money. Don't want to do that anymore. Too many so, people. It takes too many people to control them. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just really complicated. So it saves them money to do CGI. I hate, I hate doing that, but... Some CGI is good. Some CGI mm -hmm. looks fantastic, and it really adds to mm -hmm. a movie, but in I some cases, I feel them. like it cheapens it. I would combine them. You know, use CGI to enhance the puppetry. Yeah. I'd, I'd do it that way. Because uh, you, you might be able to use the puppetry and be like, you know what? This would be a great moment to CGI a tear. You know, don't CGI yeah. a tear with an actual actor, but CGI a tear with a puppet. Or, you know, if you, like in the case of Splinter in this movie, because, you know, he, he doesn't actually, unlike the Turtles, he doesn't, he doesn't walk, like, through yeah. the scenes because he's a, he's a stationary uh, puppet. But that would they be an opportunity to, to actually get him to, to walk. Allow, him, allow him to move, yeah. you know. Uh, Maybe even actually do some kung fu moves, and you're like, oh. Right. Yeah, because we don't we, we don't really get to see that much in this movie at the, at the except at the very end at the uh, rooftop battle mm -hmm. uh, between uh, the turtles and him and the shredder. I'm putting uh, it out there. We we need to make a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You and me, let's do it. Yep, might as well. Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, why not? <laughs> Seth Rogen's making one, so I mean, it's going to be completely animated. But but we, we'll do live action. So. Yeah, yep, we'll do it. We'll do it old school. Um, and uh, and that was another thing I thought that. Uh, you know, I thought they did a, a pretty good job with uh, with the Shredder uh, in this movie. Although, again, mm. I think his physique, you know, the the mm. guy that played the Shredder seemed to be pretty uh, pretty small. I mean, he's like, wearing a disco suit too. Yeah, it's like very it's like it's, a red... it's, it's very like a red uh, kind of satiny 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it sort of glistens a little bit, and yeah. you now stole the, it from Michael Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> the the mask, the mask was cool though. I mean, the, the mask, mask was, was cool. cool. The mask was cool. Uh, but yeah, I thought the actor that portrayed him, I thought he was a little bit. It, it just you know, because he had the you know he had the big shoulder pads on because you know he's got those mm -hmm. blades on his shoulder, but it didn't. It was like it was like the the. Uh, the blades were like too big for the mm. actor's body. Like it just oh, didn't, yeah. didn't, you know, he was, he was like very short and slim and he just didn't really have that intimidating sort of look again in the comics and everything. The shredder was an imposing, you know, specimen, you know, he was, he was big and tall and muscular and, you know, mm. they probably could have, if they had gone back and done that again, I probably would have gotten like a, I don't know. Probably would have gotten a professional wrestler or somebody like that to, or a bodybuilder to, you know, portray that because they dubbed his voice anyway. I mean, James Sato played the Shredder physically, but it was a different actor who actually provided the voice. Mm -hmm. So if you don't need the voice, you can literally put anybody in that suit, and it and it wouldn't matter. It's probably so. really easy to dub them too because you. I, I just now thought of it. You never actually see the actor actually move his lips. Cause he, no, because he he's always got his uh, face covered. The, the only time that he removes it, and then they they actually cut it to Splinter's reaction when he's talking. Yeah. So. So yeah, it, it, you could have easily you know put anybody else in that in that role, and and it would have been fine. But but it still you know it still worked uh, you know for what it was. I think it was still effective. And again, you know it's a it's a. It's a fun movie, I think, for anybody to watch. And if nothing else, you know, just check it out for the, you know, for the, you know, the advances in, in you know, puppetry, animatronics and all that. Because it really is cool what they were able to do uh, with that. And, and considering that, you know, it didn't really have a huge budget. I mean, it was, I think it was like 13, like a 13 and a half million dollar mm. budget. And of course, it, it made far beyond that. At, at the box office nobody you know there were other studios that didn't really want to touch it you know they went to like warner brothers and disney and like all of the major uh film studios at the time and none of them wanted to touch it because yeah. they they thought it was going to bomb they you years know. later paramount's like this is gold we're gonna take it and they yeah they honestly haven't done too well but because if you think about it by the time this movie was filming uh like movies like batman hadn't come out yet mm -hmm. you know they you know like it was it hadn't been released at the, at the time that this movie was you know was in production and so you know go they were going you know on past comic book movies and their performance like you know because a few years prior you know the 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 fourth superman movie did not fare really well at the box office so it was like comic book movies seemed to be on the, the decline at that point but the you know Batman resurrected it, uh, but yeah, I mean you, they they felt like they were going to be taking a huge risk, uh, you know, with this movie, and so eventually they decided to pass it off to New Line Cinema, which was still a fairly new studio. It's it's a subsidiary of Warner Brothers, but yeah. uh, but you know they when, they hadn't been that, around they, for that long really. When Warner Brothers is in doubt of the production of a movie, they'll take it to New Line. <laughs> mm -hmm, pretty much, um, but it worked. It turned out to be a good, uh, you know, a good payoff for them because they didn't have to spend, you know, a whole lot of money uh, on the movie, and it made back, you know, probably triple, triple what they actually uh, produced it for. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but anyway, it's a, it's a, you know, it's. I think it's, a, it's still a great movie. It still holds up. Mm -hmm. You know, something that the whole family can watch, and uh, and I I believe uh, obviously all, the movies are all available on DVD and Blu-ray, but uh, I I think they're all on Netflix as well. I think all really? three of the original, at least they were they, they the last were, time that that yeah. I looked. They they maybe Netflix is always like removing stuff, yeah, so. taking their titles um, you know, in and out. But well, it, 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 contracts, you know, yeah. contracts run out, so. But uh, but definitely plenty of places where you can where you can check that out. Uh, but we are uh, pretty much out of time uh, for today. Uh, but uh, before we go, as always, I want to remind everybody to uh, subscribe, like, and share to our YouTube channel. And uh, when you subscribe, be sure to uh, tap that 
little bell icon on there so that you're receiving all the notifications whenever new episodes or content are posted. And uh, we're trying to do uh, more of that besides the episodes themselves. We've been posting a lot of uh, shorts and clips and things like that. So we're just trying to keep, uh, you know, keep everybody uh, engaged and, and uh, you know, promoting what we're doing. So um, also uh, check us out on uh, our socials. We're, we're on all the major social media platforms. And uh, we'll have those links for you on the bottom of your screen. Uh, as well as uh, down below in the video's description and in the end credits of every episode. So there's no way you can miss that. Um, also, plenty of other places where you can uh, catch the podcast, whether you want to uh, watch it or listen to it. Uh, so uh, we'll have those links for you uh, in the video's description as well. Uh, but uh, the big thing is, is, is that we want to hear from you. So you know, leave your comments and, and questions for us. Uh, you can do that by commenting on uh, on YouTube on each episode, uh, or you can uh, go to our socials and leave your comments on there, uh, or you can uh, shoot us an email on our official podcast email, uh, Kimmel and Cox at gmail dot com. Uh, so be sure to uh, to do that when you have a chance, and uh, and hey, you know, let us know uh, who's your who's your favorite Ninja Turtle. You know, do you have a favorite? You know, we we'd love to know that. Sure. Uh, who's your favorite? Let's- uh, mine would probably I, I kind of I kind of went back and forth between uh, Raphael and Michelangelo. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I would sort of you know I went through phases. I would kind of go mm-hmm. back and forth between those two. I, I'd uh, go back and I, I honestly cannot pick. I, I love all. It's four hard. Of them. Yeah, it's yeah. it's hard. They they each have uh, you know different different strengths you know to offer and mm-hmm. uh, and you know you can kind of like I can kind of see. I can kind of see a little bit of each of them, like in myself, you know, like yeah, I think we try yeah. to find uh, things that we identify with in the characters that we love. And mm-hmm. so I can find different aspects of each one of their personalities that kind of fit, uh, fit with me, but I'm uh, going to have to go with Donatello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the tech yeah. as well. Uh, but yeah, Donatello, Donatello, of course, you know, he's the, he's the techie, you know, uh, he would be the, he would be the computer geek mm-hmm. uh, out of the group. And so I could see that. You know, I can see that working uh, for you, yeah. but uh, but yeah, let us you know, let us know uh, what you think of the podcast. Let us know what you think of this episode. Is there anything that you all in particular would like to see? Would like to you know hear us talk about in the future? Uh, just leave us those comments, and uh, that'll certainly help us out a lot. And uh, also, be sure to check out our Patreon page. That's a way where you can uh, support us in a different kind of way. Uh, by actually contributing uh, towards the podcast. In essence, you would be like a, a producer because that's what producers do. Producers yeah. either either provide the money or they find the money, uh, uh, you know, in order to, um, you know, to make a production. And, and, uh, and so, you know, if you're able to, you know, every, every little bit helps. So whatever you can contribute is going to make a big difference for us. And uh, we will certainly give you the proper credit you deserve uh, for doing that. So be sure to go on that page and check out some of the perks that we're offering there and see if there's anything that stands out to you. Uh, Next week, uh, we will be continuing uh, our uh, series on the Turtles. We'll be talking about the next movie uh, in the franchise, uh, which is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. So we'll find out a little bit more background about that uh, radioactive substance that transformed uh, the turtles and splinter yeah. and where it comes from and i'm, I'm uh, definitely going to have to rewatch that one because for some reason my brain is mixing up weirdly uh that one and the uh the more recent teenage mutant ninja turtles out of the shadows oh okay okay for some reason i'm picturing a tyler perry in the movie and i'm like Wait, he wasn't in that. <laughs> he was in the uh, it's like, well, Tyler Perry's involved with so much. I mean, yeah. it's easy to, to, you know, it's like, no, nah, Tyler Perry wasn't in that movie, or was he? I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so we're going to be talking about that uh, next week, and we certainly hope you'll join us for that. Uh, but until then, uh, be good to yourselves, and we'll see you next time. Dipstick.